If you haven't subscribed already, ring that bell to get notified when new movies are posted. Hey guys, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek, the channel where we bring you new smart home content every week. Apple HomeKit, Amazon Madam A, Google Home, and some Home Assistant. If that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing. This is a video that I've been thinking about for a while and kind of going back and forth, and I finally decided just to jump in. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at setting up Home Assistant to expose unsupported Apple HomeKit devices into Apple HomeKit. So this video is really going to be just the basis of a uh, really quick and simple, as simple as you can get, installing Home Assistant, you know, the components you need, and getting it up and ready. And really, this is going to be the foundation for some future videos. So I do not claim to be a Home Assistant expert. I'm going to put some some video details probably, I think, up, up here somewhere and uh, point you to some other content creators that I have found useful as I've started to dive uh, further into Home Assistant. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I will do my best to answer questions. Uh, let's let's get into it. So first things first, what is Home Assistant and why would you even want to do this? Well, there are a lot of great devices out there that, um, that for whatever reason, they either are never going to support HomeKit, have no intention of supporting HomeKit, or like some have announced that they'll support HomeKit and just never deliver. So that's a problem if you want to be able to integrate these into your Apple HomeKit uh, smart home, right? So there is a project out there called Home Assistant. And Home Assistant is an open source project, which means that nobody really owns it. Um, there's just a bunch of people who want this to work and they contribute their time and effort and, and code to giving us a better solution. So that's what we're gonna look at today. This does require some technical chops, um, but if you've got a little patience, you've got a little technical ability, or you just wanna learn something, it is something that is not hard for us to embrace. So as I said in the uh, video intro, I am definitely not an expert here, but I will put some links to some people who are in the video details below so you can get a little more help if you need it. So for the rest of this video, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take you through the four steps that you're going to need to do to get a Raspberry Pi up and running, install uh, Home Assistant on it, or the Has IO distribution of Home Assistant, configure HomeKit and get it exposed out to Apple HomeKit and connected. So let's dig right in on the Home Assistant, um, the, the page here, which is home-assistant.io. Of course, you can go and read the blogs, um, learn how to turn your Raspberry Pi into a smart home, awaken your home, all that good stuff. There is a really great getting started section here where you've got a Raspberry Pi 3. That's the model that they recommend you get, a micro SD card. And uh, of course, they show you how to do that. So I'm going to really quickly go through and show you what it looks like putting the Raspberry Pi together. I'll put a link to a Raspberry Pi that I'm using uh, down in the video details as well. So let's look at the Pi first. So I'm actually using a uh, Canna kit that I picked up off of Amazon. This is going to cost you less than $100. You might sometimes see that a Pi is supposed to be like 30, 40 bucks. Yeah, for the board, but if you want the case and the power supply and everything else, um, you're going to need to get all of that stuff. So the Canna kit, link in the video details. This is a full computer here. It's got USB ports. Uh, it's got an HDMI port on there, the uh, GPIO pins if you want to add other things to it. Um, USB powered, micro powered, everything you really need to run. And this is going to be your whole um, Raspberry Pi that's going to run your home automation server, right? So you can see that this is not hard to put together, right? I, I don't want to be anybody to be intimidated by this. You have to be willing to, to take a little bit of a chance and to learn something new, but really it's, it's snap it together. No soldering, no tools required, and it just works. So step two here is installing Home Assistant, or more accurately, HASIO, which is the all-in-one um, version, which you're just going to flash the memory card. And that's really easy. You're going to go into that, again, getting started. You're going to find the Raspberry Pi Model 3B, uh, B+, 32-bit recommended, right? Uh, do a little, little research here. You're going to want to do some reading on this to make sure you get the right one. But uh, essentially, that's it. You download it you get this tool here called Etcher, which is gonna be used to write this disk image that you're gonna to download to the SD card, and it's super, super easy to do. So you may have to download and install Etcher. I've already got it installed here. And essentially, we're just going to select the Hass IO image that you've downloaded. 
you're going to then flash it over to the card. So right, the disk you inserted was not readable by the computer. So this is the SD card that came as part of your Raspberry Pi. You probably have a little SD card reader, USB thing that you can uh, slide your SD card into. And essentially we just open this file and then we're gonna select the drive. Once this, uh, I'll, I'll uh, stick the, the card in now. So you're going to want to make sure that the drive selected is indeed the SD card reader. It should be 32 gigs or whatever your SD card happens to be. And then you can click on that flash button to start the flashing. You will most likely be prompted for your username and password because this is overwriting whatever's on that disk. So be cautious about this. Make sure that you actually are writing to the SD card and not to some other external drive that uh, you're going to lose data on, right? So don't just blindly click things read what you're doing first this is going to take a little bit of time so we will skip right to the end and so as part of this process not only are you going to flash the card you're also going to go through a whole validation process to make sure it got written properly so once that's done it's going to unmount the drive and says okay the disk you inserted was not readable by this computer that's normal we're going to inject this put it into our raspberry pi and then we're just going to turn it on and wait for i think it's about 20 minutes uh, before we're going to be able to log into Home Assistant itself. So at this point, we have successfully got our Pi up and running. We've got HasIO installed. We've flashed it to the uh, the SD card. We put the SD card back in. We plugged the whole thing in and waited our 20 minutes. Now we're going to log in. So it's hasio.local um, colon 8123. And that hasio.local, that is a... Um, I think it's called an MDNS uh, name, which, which means you don't even have to worry about that. You can just navigate to the name and not have to look for your IP address. You can see there's some devices that have already been discovered uh, because it's gonna be doing that as part of its initial discovery and that's totally normal. So we're gonna go through kind of a minimal setup here that you need to get HomeKit exposed out through Home Assistant, right? The first thing we're gonna have to do is go in and install a plugin uh, for the configuration piece that we're gonna have to do. All right, so we're going to go to the add-on store and go down and select the configurator component because that's how we're going to be able to change our configuration files and kind of turn this on. So we will install this, and then once that's installed, we're going to have to set username and passwords. So we will kind of skip through that really quickly. Once we're done, you can see that now we can uninstall it, start it. It's kind of given us the uh, some configuration parameters. We're going to have to change the password from null to another value. So you can change just the password or whatever else you want. Um, be more secure. In my case, I am going in and changing the allowed networks for a 10, uh, 10 .0 .0 .0 .0 uh, slash 8. So this is a RFC 1918 compliant um, private addressing, but I just happen to run my network in this range. So I want to make sure that I can get from any of my hosts into my Home Assistant node as well. So we'll save that. You probably don't have to do that in your environment. Most people are running uh, home IP addresses in the 192.168 range. So this will probably work out of the box for you. Uh, if you. If it doesn't, chances are like me, you probably know what to do to fix that. So now we can go in and open the web UI where we will see the configuration piece and we can go down and look at configuration.yaml. Uh, one thing I do want to point out to you guys though is the secrets.yaml file. So I'm going to be using this so that I don't have to type my passwords and share that with you guys. Um, I encourage you to go and look at the documentation and see how this uh, secrets.yaml file. So this is like a little piece of homework that I want to give you guys. Right, we're not going to look much at it today, but um, maybe we'll follow up in a future email. Or, like I said, you can go and check out some of those other resources that I have uh, included in the video. So, the configuration.yaml file. This is where we want to add components. Right, so a component is a um, it's a a piece of additional information that we can add to Home Assistant. And so there are a ton of components out there. If I go and look at the web page right now, you can see we've got just an amazing amount, uh, 1,330 to take advantage of. And the one we're looking for is the HomeKit component, not to be confused with the HomeKit controller component. Right, so the HomeKit controller component allows you to attach HomeKit devices to Home Assistant. That's not what we wanna do. We wanna expose HomeKit devices from Home Assistant. So if you go through this page, 
Everything you possibly need to know about the HomeKit component is in here. Uh, this is by far, in my experience, one of the best, if not the best, open source project uh, as far as documentation that I have seen. That doesn't mean it's perfect, but it means that it's actually really good. Um, you have the ability in here, as you can see, go through all our options to include specific domains or types of devices, do some entity, uh, an entity is an, a HomeKit accessory. You know, uh, we've got all the variables. We want to auto start it. What's the name, IP address? There's all these configuration elements in here, which we can use, but as you'll notice in the list, a lot of them are optional. So to start off with, we're actually just going to use the HomeKit option and not really worry about anything else. All we want to do is to get this connected to HomeKit. So let's start off with that. Let's flip back over to the configuration page. So now that we're back in the configuration.yaml file, we're going to scroll to the bottom of the page, um, make a little space here, and we're going to put in the word HomeKit colon. And this has to be exactly as what was written in the documentation, right? This is going to be absolutely unforgiving. Um, and that's just the way things are, right? That's why I'm, I've said a couple times, you do have to have some level of technical ability. Um, it's not hard. You know, so you can pick it up, but you want to make sure that you get this right. And then we're going to go over configuration general and check config. Now that is going to be something that you do repeatedly. Um, just get used to because this is the way this works. It's open source. It's not the same kind of click and just things work experience that you're going to get out of Apple HomeKit. Now we're going to go in and restart Hass, and that's going to restart the entire um, Home Assistant platform. It's going to take a minute, maybe two, depending on, on the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi that you have. When we come back in, we should see that we've now got the integrations loaded. And uh, if we're lucky, if we've done this properly, you should see the HomeKit setup code there. And that's exactly what that is. All right. Um, so right now, we've got really no other devices added. And you've got a HomeKit code, which is kind of cool. So now we're going to be able to go over to the um, Apple Home app itself and add in this new device as a bridge. So in the list right now on the screen, you're seeing there's a whole bunch of other integrations. I don't even want you guys to worry about that right now. Let's just go over to the Apple Home app. So now is where things start to feel a lot more familiar, right? We're in the Apple Home app. Um, we're going to click on the Add Accessory button, and up will come that select which accessory. Of course, we're going to want the Home Assistant uh, bridge here. And we're just going to tap on that, and then we're going to put in the HomeKit code that we previously saw. So, again, I'll pause here. This is unsupported. Do we want to add it anyways? Uh, make sure it stays connected to power nearby. Of course, yes, we can do that. But realize this is an unsupported uh, device, right? So just be aware of that. Uh, take, you know, buyer beware. Um, we're dealing with open source. I cannot stress this enough. If you're someone who who gets frustrated easily by technology, uh, you're probably not watching this video, to be honest. But if you are that person, you probably do not want to start installing Home Assistant. Let me make that recommendation for you. So for those of you paying close attention to the screen, you will see that I've got one of seven devices loaded here. Uh, but you're going to have to subscribe and come back later this week for, uh, for the big reveal to see which devices I'm actually exposing. Because uh, I'm not going to show you that right now. But the thing is, is we're basically done. The next time you add a HomeKit unsupported device to Home Assistant, it's going to be exposed out through Apple HomeKit. And that's it. We have now taken that first step into supercharging HomeKit using Home Assistant. Um, this is going to make our lives a lot easier. You're going to open up a whole bunch of devices that we might otherwise not have access to without a lot of work. As you've seen, it's pretty simple to be able to configure uh, Home Assistant and get it up and running. Now, that being said, there is a ton of functionality and features in a home assistant that uh, I'm not really going to focus on on this channel. So I'm again going to put uh, links to other content creators that I have found useful and helpful in the video details below. If you got any questions, please post. I will do my best to answer those. Um, likes, subscribe, you know, all that stuff always appreciated. And uh, hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this new journey as I start trying to kind of cobble in devices that were never meant to work with HomeKit and get that in together as part of my smart home. See you guys soon. Wait, wait, wait. Before you guys go, I'm Carlo from vCloud Info. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. And when you're done, 
Come check out my channel if you want to see more home assistant videos. I have a ton of home assistant videos based on my own smart home. There's a GitHub repo, and we just sort of break down how I'm implementing smart home technologies in my house. So Chris will link the channel right up here. Um, I'll see you. Take care.